Maximum Wage. We're now joined in studio by the overall convener at uh, NEDLAC, uh, Mr. Dumisane Mtalane. Thank you very much for joining us. So welcome to the program. Thank you and uh, good evening to your viewers. All right. So why did it take two years? It has been uh, a tough negotiations at some some stage with that lock and then we had to have bilateral talks with business uh, with labor at some stage uh, the deputy president has to come in so it has been a long mm. process we thought it was going to take us a year but it, it, it didn't work like okay. that because everybody was pushing and everyone was pulling so we couldn't mm take the process so 3,500 rand a month how did we get to that figure that figure was uh, proposed by the, the special pa panelists because they took all the research we did which was done by community by labor by government everybody and then they looked at what we were uh, putting on the table for figure like uh, we started at 5,000 whatsoever and then we were moving closer mm -hmm. until then they took everything and then they read and said with what they have, this is what they are proposing, mm -hmm. the 3.5. And now we have to work on that, that's the 3.5. We have to say what we're saying is mm -hmm. parties and we also have to lo look at the labor relations because labor relations is also going to change. It's going to this p this uh, report will go to parliament and it will also go to the cabinet mm. and then it's going to through go through legislation so we are busy with that mm. process we think by end of december we should be through wi with this process and then mm. somewhere in and then we go for public hearings and then we hoping in july we'll be starting with the legislation Okay, so <laughs> can somebody live on 3,500 rand a month, especially if you've got a family? Uh, no, you can't, but it's a starting point mm. because as it is now, people who are working 47% mm. are earning less than 3,500 and others are earning 1,000 rand. And if you've got a family of five, if you're earning 2,005, that's just for mm. food. There's not no extra sense there, but it's a start, and we'll be reviewing. Uh, I think by 2018, then we we'll start reviewing whether we agree. We are we'll review on a yearly basis mm. or what. So, but we're going mm. through the process. So now, one of the challenges that you must have had to going into this process is that various sectors have different needs and uh, are prepared to pay different levels of wages. So if we look at the minimum wages for domestic workers and the agricultural sector, for example, and compare that with mining, there's a huge disparity. Mm -hmm. How do we start to close that gap, even when we start, stop talk, start talking about inequality in general? What, what is going to happen is that we, we'll start at 3.5, mm. and then we have a review of which we want to push for a mean a mean a living wage because this is not a living wage mm -hmm. it's just a start so that we think that will close the gap like mm -hmm. even now with the government is looking at the capping the salaries mm -hmm. of the ceo because of ceo of the soes okay. to try and bridge the gap all right so i i can understand businesses perhaps might be resistant and but they'll end up forking out the 3500 rand but when i'm looking at domestic workers that 3,500 Rand is not coming from a business, mm. it's coming out of someone's pocket. Mm. Are you not worried that we're going to see some jobs disappearing as a result of this? We have that in mind, that's why we, we, we're saying we mustn't have a high minimum wage because more jobs will be lost. Mm. And uh, you cannot fix uh, the domestic workers at one age because that's a sect sectoral determination mm. by the minister so you can't say that it's a minimum wage so you've got to move up but there is a process which is going to say we, we, which we're going to look at and start saying if if you can't pay this amount then mm. we'll, e we'll examine examine what you call it review we'll allow you yeah. we'll look at the amount and then we have mm -hmm. to expose your income and everything and then is the exemption mm -hmm. will take place but not everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um smes 
that's where the bulk of employment is going to come from and is coming from. Mm. 3,500 Rand could be a lot for a lot of these uh, small businesses. Can they apply for exemptions or is there another way to look at this equation? They can apply for the exemption. They say, here's the more profit. And then out of your profit, then we say, no, you can't afford. Mm -hmm. And then we exempt you. All right, so that would mean their employees are earning below the minimum wage and their counterparts in an, another company that's succeeding will be earning more. Whilst it benefits the company, the employees still living under that 3,500, that can't be good. From the community point of view, that's not for, for, for all of us. We, we feel that they should be subsidized mm. by the so social security, as we will be discussing the social security on Friday in the ESCO and look how to subsidize mm. them. That's our proposal, but it's not on the table mm -hmm. yet to say if you 2000, then you 1005 come from social grant whatsoever, like, like as it is now, if you're looking at uh, UIF, we have 120 billion rand, of which we, it's not you. So mm -hmm. we, we will look at other options. What is it that can be done? All right. So, Kosantu, going into this, we're asking for 4,500 rand. So it's quite a gap that still exists. Are they on board? Have you had a chance to engage? In most cases, uh, community and COSA and uh, we workers, they caucus together. Mm. All things we we more or less the same, so we, we do talk to one another. There is that good relationship with the labor and community. All right, so uh, timeline, this is a mid to late next year where this legislation will be in place. Yes. And at that point, then companies will have to adjust or start applying for exemptions if they can't afford it. Is that, is that the process? Yes. Okay. Um, again, looking at these, these figures, business that initially was uh, looking at about 1,800 Rand, and they would have thought, that's what we can afford. Uh, jump from 1,800 to 3,500 is quite huge. Can they afford this? I think they will afford, because during the bilaterals, mm -hmm. they are no longer on one age. They were somewhere they on mm. on the two something so it's something which they can uh, afford and then mm. business is business they should be having money and is it true that 47 percent of working south africans are earning below 3500 right now that's correct and that's about seven million people yeah seven million people all right so if we now raise them i'm just again i'm looking at the figures and this seven million at three thousand five hundred that is that is a staggering figure mm. to jump from where it is now i think the average uh, for 2015 was around th 2500 mm. rand so we're looking at, at quite a substantial increase yeah but it's a it's a, it's a true reflection mm. that people are not getting paid well so if you're going to look at the levels where they are, it would be un unfair to look at the level th where they are and start say it's a big mm. jump. If you've got people earning uh, three million mm. a year whatsoever, what about them? Mm. Because we're buying from the same shops. There is nothing like which says if you're earning 1,000 rand, your gr grocery will be less. So we, we, we have been treating people unfairly and then we, we can't justify that mm. and say, no, it's a big jump. A big jump from where? From mm. nothing. You see? Let's talk a little bit about the research itself. Have you been able to compare with um, similar nations around the world and what was the effect that they had when they introduced the minimum wage? Was there job destruction or was it minimal? At some stage there was a job uh, destruction, but because they've been here, we've invited other countries mm -hmm. at some stage and they presented how they're doing and then we're benchmarking ourselves against Brazil. Brazil have got uh, more or less the same models as ours. And did Brazil enjoy or see this um, reduction in, in poverty income that uh, this is what you're trying to do? Did they succeed there as a result of introducing this minimum wage? They did succeed. They did succeed. It's just a matter of commitment. Mm. We right. must be. We must be coming. As we sat down uh, around the table, we, we, we all agreed. So now we must see that commitment taking place. 
that you have agreed now what you have to do now you have got to be player a genuine player mm. because you can't say because you're on the other side you earning 30,000 rands a month and then you, you feel justified to pay somebody mm. 1,000 rand it's it's not fair at all mm. it's not fair all right and of course <laughs> you know the economists will tell you that uh, a huge increases in uh, wages can start to contribute to things like inflation and once we start getting up an inflation cycle the economy suffers and those jobs disappear has that been factored in we've looked at all that mm. but we, we have to make a difference we have to make a change you can't say because people are there and you come up with uh, some studies and you say this it, it's unfair to those people that you, because you've done your research, mm. your economists, economists, they all say what they want to say at that time. And then you must face the reality. What are we doing here? All right, okay. Um, it, it seems like a, a, a good step, significant. Uh, just how significant would you say uh, today is? I mean, it's the, a major step towards some kind of living wage. Um, how far down the line do you think we will get to a point where every single person in South Africa who is working is living on a living wage? What's the timeline that you have on the horizon? As we'll be hoping to complete the process mm. in December, like I've said, yeah. then in uh, July, legislation, and then 2017, I think we should be through, 2018. So after 2018, we will be reviewing what is mm. sufficient because we are looking for a living wage, not just a salary. Because other people, if you're looking at the situation now, there are people who are not unionized. Mm. We are not part and parcel of the bargaining unit, nothing. And those people, if you want to adjust them, how do you adjust mm. them? Because there are no mm. negotiations. Th there is a danger, and I'm not sure how you're going to deal with this, where somebody is desperate for work mm. and he will say to the employer, you don't have to pay me the minimum wage, just give me a job. What do you do in those situations? Um, from the community point of view, we've said uh, we should have e lab, uh, e labor inspectors to see if it's taking place. And uh, the department was proposing that you should be fined. But from the community point of view, we feel that it should be criminalized in order to force it to happen. As it is now, you, you've got companies where they put black people as the directors whatsoever, just smoke screen as BEE. So you, we don't want to find ourselves in that position. All right, but again, mm. th the motivation of the person is, I'll work for anything, it, and they won't report it. They won't tell anybody. And even if you try and find out, they won't cooperate because the job is more valuable to them uh, than um, you know, selling out their boss, as it were. But inspectors would get into that. Uh, that's a huge job. Mm. You're confident you have the resources for that? We, we, we've discussed it, and Labour is busy. Uh, mm. Working on that to get oh. more inspectors, even now, because they have less inspectors, so now they are in the process of getting more inspectors so that whatever needs to be checked uh, with the employers, we mm. will have. They must show us their books and everything, and then we say, okay, because there will be a body mm. which will be working on that, monitoring that, right. if it is taking place. So, um, just to be clear, mm. this minimum wage does not affect those agreements that are in place now that have been negotiated by various trade unions with their various sectors and uh, various employers? No, it won't affect because the people who are earning more than 3 5 mm. they're not going to be brought down. So this is a start of leveling the field, the playing mm. field. And those who are in the bargaining unit will continue doing mm. that. This is just a, 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 a separate process right. which is trying to take the poor of the poor at least out of poverty, mm. okay. going towards the, main, uh, the living wage. And I, I'm going to keep coming back to the domestic workers because there are hidden payments, not hidden so much, but that you don't see. So, for example, you will give your domestic worker transport and you'll give your domestic worker food and some will even get housing. Will that fall away out of this 3,500 Rand or is this included? 
with that, with what you're saying, we, we, we're still working on what is it that we'll be doing. Because like now, we've got the, the proposed. Now we have to go back and get the mandate mm. and look at all those things. How is it going to be structured? I, if you're saying they're getting 3 five, mm. are you going to say that you're putting inflation rate or not? All those, all those sort of things. Now, or, or you just say, we're pushing 300 this year, we're pushing 400 this year. Mm. Th those are the things which you have to look at and then come back. Fortunately, like we say, in two mm. weeks' time, we're looking at meeting mm. and then debating what, what we have. And then by the end mm. of the year, we should have finalized this Will thing. employees be able to negotiate? You know, so if I'm a domestic worker and I say, if you give me a place to stay and you give me meals, then all I want is 2,000 rand a month. I, I think, I think, legislation is legislation. If legislation is 3-5, mm. it's got to be 3-5. It, 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 it doesn't have to be piecemeal in saying a uh, pass fail whatsoever. Package that thing mm. to 3.5 mm. and then do what legislation says. Right, right. Mm. Okay, so as of today, business and labor are more or less on the same page with regards to this 3,500. The process from now is that the public can input. Might this figure change if you get sufficient input from the public? Yeah, the figure might change, might go up, might uh, come down, but uh, we, uh, we don't think it's going to come mm. down. Or, um, rather go up. But the last time when we checked, because Deputy President has been talking to one on one, so he, he knows the figures, our mm. figures, and then we, it looks like all of us who are confident that we are going to settle on this thing. All right, so Mr. Matalani, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us and sharing your thoughts with us. Congratulations on uh, getting this far. I know it's been uh, quite a process, two years in the making, but mm. uh, certainly progress is being made. And I think millions of South Africans will appreciate uh, that there's a definite movement now going uh, certainly towards that living wage that uh, is the ideal for everyone. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. All right. Okay, that's where we're going to leave the discussion. We've been talking about uh, the minimum wage that's uh, been proposed today, a figure of 3,500 rand a month, or 20 rand an hour has been proposed. But the Deputy President has said to the public, you can now input in this process, and hopefully by mid next year, we might be well on the way into making this law. We'll take a quick break. More after this. It doesn't always make sense.